What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design floating action buttons according to Google's material design guidelines. Let's get started. There's two things we're going to be designing today. The first is a floating action button, which has a regular and mini variant. And then there will also be an extended floating action button, which will have a customizable icon with text to the right of it. Floating action button is also called a fab. It performs the primary or most common action on any given screen. It'll appear in front of all screen content usually as a circular shape with an icon in the center. You should only use a fab if it's the most suitable way to present a screen's primary action. Two good examples of that that I was able to find on my phone were Google Maps. You can see they have two floating action buttons in their UI, which is very uncommon, but it worked for them. And then in Twitter, the compose tweet icon is fixed at the bottom right. If you're not familiar with floating action buttons, I recommend going to Google Material Design's website before starting this video. There you can learn about things like usage, anatomy, placement, behavior, and you can even play with an interactive demo for both buttons types. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the existing button components that we created in the previous video as a reference point when starting to create our floating action button. If you want to learn more about creating buttons, I recommend going to that video which I've linked in the description. The first thing I'm going to do is type the word plus, then I'm going to go to the fonts and type in font awesome pro. I'm going to set this to be 18 pixels size, 24 pixel line height, and then I'm going to hit shift A to apply auto layout. I'm going to make sure that there's 16 pixels of vertical and horizontal padding, and then I am going to make sure that this is a fixed 24 pixel width and that this is a fixed 24 pixel height. I am going to take the fill color that we're using on this button over here and I'm going to make this icon white. Now I've got a 56 by 56 button and I'm going to add a 100 pixels of rounding. Call this normal. Now I'm going to duplicate this and let's call this hover. Add a few shadows here. One, two, and then 10. Two, four, eight, four, eight, six. And what you can see here is I'm just multiplying by two. So eight, 16, and then I'm reducing by 2% opacity each time. So we've got 10, eight, six, four. And then let's finally do 16, 32, and then 2%. That's our hover state. Go to this normal one that doesn't have a shadow. Change this fill to match this button style here. And then we're gonna have a little bit darker gray for the icon. Call this disable. Now let's grab this and make our focused state focus still here we'll add a two pixel stroke on the outside we'll have that be this lighter purple and then finally we'll have the pressed state we will do here and then we're just going to take all of these and up them by two percent to make the shadow a bit more intense call this pressed i'm going to create a component set and i'm going to call this floating action button and then i'm going to call this property state if i go here take this i can switch from disable, hover, normal, etc. Now that we have the normal floating action button, let's go ahead and create the mini version of this, which is 40 pixels as opposed to 56. So if we take all of these, duplicate them, and then we're gonna keep this size the same, but we're just gonna reduce the padding. So we'll change this from 16 to eight, and then 16 to eight, and then we will keep these within this component set and then i'm going to go to the properties create a new property called variant i'm going to have this be small and the value is going to be false by default but then i'm going to select all of these and say true and what that does is if i take this component move it over here i toggle this on and off it'll change between a small and a large button size you could also have this be a drop down but i think it's quicker to be able to toggle between them like this let's make sure that these are both default these are both hover these are both disabled these are both focus and these are both pressed. Next, we're going to create the versions of these that have text. One thing to note is that Google Material Design Guidelines advocate for only one style of floating action button, which isn't as big as this large button, but it's not as small as this one. But for the sake of flexibility, I'm going to have both versions of these, but just an additional text layer to the side. So let's duplicate first these large buttons and then move these over here. I'm going to take that text layer from our button style, which is 14 pixels in size and 20 pixels in line height. I'll select all of these and then I'll set the layout to horizontal and reduce this to eight pixels and then i'm actually going to increase the size of this a little bit it feels a bit small so let's bump this up to 16 pixels i'm going to change the line height of these to be 24 feels a bit more centered and then i have these larger buttons that i can use if i want let's also make the small versions of these so let's take all of these and then i am going to take this text style from these buttons over here select all of these 
Commit, copy, paste. Again, horizontal. Switch this to eight pixels. Also, let's actually go back over here. I'm gonna separate these and I'm gonna make this padding on the right 20 pixels. And then I'm gonna take all these. I'll set the space between the eight pixels. The left side padding to eight pixels. The right side padding to 16 pixels and the top and bottom to be eight. Now to organize these a little bit more, I'm gonna put these smaller versions by each other and these larger versions by each other. Keep the spacing consistent. So we'll have that be 24 in each. And then this smaller. We'll make this smaller. So if you look at the floating action button component set, I've got the state, which is disabled, hover, etc., And then I have small, which is true or false. But then the last thing that I need to do is I also need to specify whether or not there is text. So I'm gonna add a property here. And I'm gonna say text, and the default will be false. Create that property. Then we'll select all these. And we're going to set text to be true. And then you'll see all the issue messages that I had have been resolved. Now let's delete this. One last thing we need to do is we need to select all these text elements. So let's have these say hug contents and we'll also have these say hug contents. And we'll select all of these and set them to say hug contents. Let's take this button. I'm gonna use change this into something I might actually use. Do shopping cart. And then I'm gonna change to say add to cart. I can change this to be a small button or a large button. It could be text or no text, it could be default pressed, focused, etc. Looking at how this would actually work on a screen, you could have your bottom nav bar and then you or you'd have your floating action button. In this case, it would be something like what Twitter had. It's that CTA to compose a new tweet. But another example of what you could have, you could be on a product detail page, but you would maybe want some sort of sticky floating action button that's asking people to add something to their cart. These are a couple ways to use floating action buttons, but there are many more potential applications depending on the website or mobile app that you're building. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of floating action buttons and feel like you would be able to create a component set that you could use and customize according to the needs of your next design project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.